Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, this is uh, Pastor Rodney. Just wanted to uh, kick off our faith injection today. Hope everybody is doing well. Uh, we are praying for you and your family during these times, and uh, just excited to have the opportunity to come and, and spend some time each and every day um, with our faith injection. And today, I just wanted to, I want us to hop right into it today. I really want us to be, you know, I think as you're focusing on the Word of God each and every day, uh, my goal, all of our goal is, and hope is, is that you are um, making sure you're spending that quality time in the Word and prayer. So uh, if you uh, if you have your Bibles today, I want us to uh, hop into um, the book of Acts. We're going to go to Acts chapter 3. And I want to read a few things um, out of the book of Acts here in, in Acts chapter 3. Read a few verses of scripture. Um, if you get a chance, you can share this video. We'd like for as many people to be blessed by these each and every day. So if you can share these videos, that will definitely help uh, each and every day. Uh, but in Acts chapter 3, I want to start with um, uh, verse 1. The Bible says that now Peter and John went up together to the temple at the hour of prayer, the ninth hour, and then there was a certain man who was lame from his mother's womb and was carried, who they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful. He was there to ask of alms or, or beg for money for those who entered the temple. And when he saw Peter and John go into the temple, he asked them for alms. So I want to kind of talk about something first. We see that we've got a man who every day people are bringing him so that he can put his cup and, and, and beg for, for money, beg for change, basically. And whenever Peter and John are going up to the place of prayer, the Bible says in verse 4 that this gentleman, he fixed his eyes on, you know, they, they, they fixed his eyes on him with John. He, so he looked at Peter. So the thought process I want you to understand when we're looking at this verses of Scripture in Acts chapter 3 is there's a man every day brought to the gate. And as he's brought to that gate, he's there to beg. He's begging for money. He's, he's there to beg. And he's looking at the cup. You know, he's looking, man, please give me some money. The problem is he's got an issue and he's lame. He can't work like you and I can. And he's there looking for money. His focus is, is how much money can I make every day? And how can I, you know, beg for change? But for a moment, he stops focusing on that money, that, that, that alms he's asking for, and he gets his eyes fixed on Peter. He gets his eyes off the problem, and he, and he looks at Peter. And the Bible says that in verse 4, he says, and he fixed his eyes on him with John and Peter. And Peter said, look at us. You know, this is what I love in, in this scripture here. The Bible says that Peter said, look at us. You know, a lot of times we as Christians, we're, we're always, and, and I don't want us to come off the wrong way, but we're, we'll say, hey man, look at Jesus. And, and we want people to look at Jesus, but we here are the representative of Christ on the earth. And Peter and John are there and they said, hey, look at us. They wanted him to get his eyes off of the problem and get his eyes onto them because they knew that they had something. And he said, look at us. He didn't say, hey, go look at your preacher. He didn't say, hey, go look to the deacons. He didn't go look to say somebody else. He said, look at me. So we as a believer, when we have the power of God, the anointing of God on the inside of us, we can tell people, hey, hey stop. Look at us because we have something on the inside. The Bible says, that uh, Peter said in verse 6, he said, silver and gold I don't have. He said, but what I do have, he says, I give to you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. So we see that Peter, here Peter says, he goes, look, what I do have, I give to you. So Peter knows that he's got something on the inside of him. He knows he's got something to give away. And you see, when we are a, a, a believer, We've got the anointing on the inside of us. I want to tell you, we can tell people, hey, look at us. Come to us because we've got the answer. We've got the solution. We have the anointing. We've got the life of God flowing in our life, through our life, and we can touch other people. You know, we have that ability because Jesus, he, he, tell, he, I mean, he, he told us that in Mark 16. We'll get there in a moment. But he told him, he said, what I do have, I will freely give. The life of God is tangible. The anointing is tangible. 
Peter knew it. He knew that what he had, he said, I'm going to give to you. He knew that he had, just like whenever, the, you know, when people get a, they're worried about, you know, hey, you get a disease or you get something, it's something that'll get on you that can get in you. Well, man, think about this. If a disease or a virus can get on the inside of us, and we know that, and, um, you know, we're thinking about that kind of stuff. Here's my thought. Why are we not focusing on the life of God getting on the inside of us, that anointing on the inside of us, and start meditating and thinking about the life of God that's on the inside of me, and how can I give that out to other people? We're worried about stopping the spread of flu and every other virus. I want to tell you, I want to be so full of God that, that nobody can stop me passing the life of God into other people. Jesus said in Mark's gospel, the 16th chapter, in the 15th verse, he said, go into all the world and preach. He didn't say stay home. He said, go. And he said in verse 17, he said, these signs will follow them that believe. So we know that there will be miracles and there will be signs that follow. Not only that, but in verse 18, he tells us that Jesus says, they will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. So here we have Peter, who was one of the disciples. He heard Jesus. He was mandated. He was told, hey, lay hands on the sick. So when Peter walked up to the gate, and the, the gate called Beautiful, and he saw a man lame there, he said, hey, look at me. Hey, hey, quit focusing on that problem. You look at me. I've got the answer. I've got the solution. I've got the tangible anointing of God on the inside of me. And when I lay hands on you, something good is about to happen for you. You know, I remember I was thinking about this when I was meditating on these verses of Scripture. You know, I remember as being a child, six, seven, eight, nine years old, and, my, you know, my, my, my family, my mom, my dad, uh, we went to church occasionally, but we were not the, the regular church attenders in my family. We didn't go to church, but I remember as a kid, um, I knew that whenever I got to feeling bad or had any kind of sickness and, and I was hurting as a child, you know, I, I, would, I would look at my mom and dad. I'd say, hey, please call granny. My grandmother was a praying woman, and I knew as a small kid, six, seven, eight, I, I didn't know biblical words. I didn't know any theological answers. Heck, I didn't even know any church things. All I knew is that if I was laying on the couch sick as a dog, my grandmother would come down to my house. She would get on her knees, you know, an, an elderly woman, and she would lift her hands. And man, I want to tell you, when that woman began to pray, I want to tell you something powerful began to happen. And I, as a child, six, seven, eight, I couldn't put it in it. I didn't know what was happening, but I knew that when my grandmother began to pray for me, she prayed heaven down on, on that situation. And I want to tell you, something on the inside changed. And, and as a small child, six, seven, eight years old, like I said, I didn't know what was going on. I just knew that when Granny prayed, something powerful happened because she had the life of God on the inside of her. She knew it, and she knew that when she prayed, she didn't care. She'd lay hands. She'd pray for you. And man, something as a kid connected with that because I knew that when she prayed, something was happening on the inside of me. I could feel it. I felt better. And it, I, I want to tell you, that is what Peter and John did here with this man at the gate called Beautiful. They said, look at me. What I've got on the inside, I'm about to give to you. And, and that's where we've got to be as, as a body of believers in the, in the place we're at today. We've got to be the people that are willing to lay hands on the sick. You know, so many people are worried, what if I pray for somebody and something doesn't happen? I, I'm not going to give you all the answers, but what I'm here today is say, most people will be just happy as a lark that you prayed for them. But here's what i got to ask you. What happens if you lay hands on somebody and they do get healed? What happens then? You know, I want to tell you, revival will break out in your area. People will call and say, hey, I don't know what's going on at that person's church, but they prayed for me and something happened. And I promise you, you can pass the tangible anointing, the life of God that's in you. You've got, you've got to meditate on it. Get focused on God and Jesus in me, Christ in me, the hope of glory. Why is it the hope of glory? All of heaven is waiting on you and I to go out into the and it's ready. We've got to, I mean, preach the gospel, lay hands on the sick. It's our time to shine right now. We've got the answers. The CDC, you know, praise God, they're working on stuff for people. But at 
for me and you, I'm not worried about it. I know I've already got the solution. I've got Jesus, the healer, on the inside of me, and I want to be able to share that with others because the tangible anointing of God is flowing in my life, and I want to be able to give that away to others. So I want to pray for you right now as we get ready to close and and just want to continue to keep you fed, keep your faith uh, lifted. Um, I'm just going to pray over you, and just we're just praying that God stir something on the inside. Father, I just thank you right now in the name of Jesus that everybody that's watching and listening to this, uh, Lord, uh, faith injection, God, that Lord, you're stirring up, Lord God. Lord, we just thank you that as Paul told Timothy, he said, stir up the gift of God that's on the inside of you from when I laid hands on you. Father, I just thank you, God, that you that the life of God is in us and flowing through us. And God, we're able to lay hands on others and God see the miraculous take place in their life. Father, I just pray, God, now that we're just stirring Stirring up the gift that's inside of each and every one of us, and that we're going to go about preaching the gospel. We're going to go about laying hands on the sick, and we're going to see them recover. Father, I thank you that the anointing is real, it's tangible, and it's something that can be passed to others because the life of God is more powerful than any germ or sickness. And God, we thank you that we can stand on the promises of God, that with your stripes we were healed, and Father, receive the blessing for our life. So God, I just thank you for everybody that's watching and listening to this. God, that Lord. Lord, every symptom, every sickness is, is dissipating. God, the life of God is flowing into their bodies, touching and healing today. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, friends. Be back to, uh, tonight. I think we've got our uh, online revival continuing. And if not, tomorrow be here at 12 uh, as Pastor Matt brings the faith injection at 12 noon. God bless you. Have a great day.